Good morning, everybody. Whether you're here in person or online, welcome. It's a pleasure to speak to, speak to you this morning. I'm just going to set my timer off because it's gone off on me, and that's not a good thing. There. Do you know, these are really strange times that we're living in. These are the kinds of times where when somebody says to you, I'm feeling really positive today, a part of you wants to take a step back. Just say it. You see, it seems like almost every day we're having to make adjustments to our plans. We need to be flexible to take into account new rules or restrictions. You see, I wrote this sermon yesterday afternoon, so it's out of date today. These are strange times. When I look on Facebook, I see lots of people who are in isolation counting down to their freedom. They're counting down in like weeks, days, hours, minutes. Celebrating because they're just finally allowed to go out to the shops. This is the bit that's out of date by now, but I'm going to do it anyway. In some ways, it was easy to cope with when everyone was working to the same rules, which we're not till Thursday. We felt when we were working together, we were working together to beat a virus. But actually, now we feel fragmented. We feel that maybe other people have got an easier life than us. Or a harder life, I don't know. But somehow we're just not quite settled. <laughs> See, I know some people who live on a county border, or very near a county border, and they can't go to the nearest shop to buy milk because that across from a tier three to a tier two. So I'm guessing they'll find it easier by Thursday. See, this morning, in the middle of things that are very different, I, I want to look at the things that make us the same. The things that unite us instead of dividing us. The freedoms that we enjoy as Christians despite the restrictions on where we can go and who we can meet up with. Are, are not, <laughs> they're not the same. We are free. There's no mileage in comparing ourselves and our situation to other people's situations. But there's a real strength and joy to be found when we look at the big picture. When we look to our Father God for comfort and strength, we find joy. You see, the restrictions that we face are all on our movements, on our social interactions, on our working practices. And they're necessary right now, but there are no government restrictions that affect who we are. You see, keeping a good grip on our identity in Christ is really important right now. Because when we do that, we combat that sense of confusion and isolation that's affecting us and all around us. See, I've seen loads of posts saying that the end of isolation will be a return to freedom. I've read threats to dance in the streets at midnight. I don't know if that happened, but I would have loved to see it. And in a sense, that's true. But actually... As Christians, our life is so much more than the physical. You see, as Christians, our freedom's more than that. Our real freedom comes from an internal and an eternal truth, not an external one. Did you get that? Our real freedom comes from an internal truth, knowing who we are in God, and an eternal truth, knowing that God is eternal. The externals don't affect our identity. We're children of God, and that truth can't be taken from us by anything that happens. In Romans 8, we read, the, sp the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live again in fear. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, I understand how tough it is when we can't be with family or friends. I have days when I find that really difficult too. But you know, there's comfort to be found in the truth that we have the Holy Spirit inside us. Note that Paul writes, and by him we cry, Abba Father. So individually, you are a child of God. Together, we are children of God. We're linked, united by the Holy Spirit. And that's really important for us right now. Do you know, we need to speak that truth to ourselves. 
We need to take time out to listen to worship songs and hear the truth that God has to say to us. We need to read the Bible. We need to take time to pray. And when we do that, when we take time out of this current situation and focus on God and the amazing gift of salvation that we have through Jesus, we find that these uncertain times that we live in, we can look to the certainty of God. So God's love for us is absolute. Our circumstances, our choices, our hopes, our fears, even our failures, cannot change his love for us. They cannot separate us from the love of Christ. Whatever happens, we are in safe hands. And that's really important right now. You see, we're very fortunate that we live in a time with social media and phones, because that gives us a way to connect to and encourage and build each other up from a safe distance. Here's a confession. I'm not very good at this. Like in the days before social media, when you kept in touch with people by phone, I have a friend who lives a long way away, who every three months used to phone up. She said, yeah, so then, Joe, we alive, are we? Because I'm not very good at keeping in contact with people. It's one of my failings. You see, what I am good at, what I find far too easy, is I can slip into an unhealthy pattern of watching Netflix whilst eating crisps. You see, what I ought to do in the moments where I feel down or isolated or lonely is not click the next episode button. I should take a moment and remember that actually I am part of the biggest and best family ever. I'm part of a church. You see, I've got a choice in those moments. I can open another pack of crisps and put on the next episode of Vera. Or I can turn the TV off and I can read something uplifting. I can read the Word of God. I can read a book. I can go for a walk, COVID rules permitting. So I might be able to go for a walk. I could decide to encourage someone with a phone call or a text or put something positive on Facebook. Here's a thought. If you're feeling isolated, take a few minutes to think about your friends, your family, members of your connect group, church leaders. Because you can bet if you feel lonely and isolated sometimes, so do they. And you know, it's within all our power to, to pick someone out and bless that person. Reach out to them, ask how they are. Share a scripture with them. Tell them something about themselves that make you smile, that make you feel good. Tell them a positive about themselves. Because actually, we all need that at the moment. And actually, in cheering someone else up by sending a positive message to them, do you know what's going to happen? This is a really good one, this. When you cheer somebody else up, you feel better. Secret. It works both ways. Because when you take the time out to be positive towards someone else, you kind of just feel your spirits lift a bit because you've taken your eyes off the confusion and you focus on the relationships you have as children of God. You see, it's too easy when things are tough to sit there thinking, oh, nobody's messaged me. Nobody cares. Nobody's messaged me for days. Do you know, that's never true. Because God's love for you is unchanging. It's absolute. It cannot be altered. So maybe in those moments where we just get a little bit distracted by our feelings, we need to reach out, build someone else up, Encourage them in the Lord. I'm going to read a scripture now that you're going to say is insanity on the breach of going into another lockdown. I'm going to read through Hebrews 10, where the word of God tells us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. That's really relevant for today. The only way that that seems irrelevant is if all you think meeting is, is meeting together as a group. These scriptures were written in times when Christians faced times of separation and dispersal, but they still met together to encourage each other. Do you know, if our physical opportunities to meet together become more restricted, and over time that will get easier or harder, we don't know how that will evolve, but 
The encouragement to keep on meeting together includes all personal messages, phone calls, Zoom meetings, and any other way in which you can continue to meet as, as the people of God and encourage each other. Do I think that scripture is really important for us right now? Never underestimate the value of a single message, a quick chat, a smile from a distance. See, we're human beings and we're designed to be social. We're designed to be social. We're designed to need each other. But we're also born into a spiritual family, a family united by the Holy Spirit. We need each other more, not less, in these strange days. See, one day we'll look back on this journey because... This is a journey. There'll be a time when COVID ends or is diminished by vaccines. Or, and we get back to normal. But that won't be normal where it was yesterday. That'll be normal where we've got to. Because do you know what? When that journey is completed, or at least controlled, we will look back and we will be surprised at how much God did amongst us on this journey. We'll be surprised at how much he's grown us. We'll be surprised at how much that restriction and isolation has helped us to grow in him, to understand better who we, the church, are. We're all connected into God, and through the Holy Spirit, we're connected into each other. And that connection will survive any lockdown, because it's rooted and established in the love of God. See, one of the freedoms that can't be affected by this pandemic is the freedom to pray. Philippians 4 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. It's not hard to be anxious in 2020. There are so many things that even the most laid-back amongst us can worry about. Here's a secret. Even Neil, the most laid-back person I've ever met, has peaked at a state of mild irritation. My understanding from Neil is like quite, quite a state. I'm worried about him. You see, this current situation is difficult. And please don't think I'm saying that you shouldn't be anxious. To me, right now, being anxious in 2020 means that you're still breathing in and out. And that you're thinking. But the difference is, as Christians, we don't have to stay anxious. We don't have to carry that anxiety. You see... We've got a place to go with that anxiety. We don't carry it around and let it destroy our confidence in God. We can take it to our Father in prayer. We can ask God to meet us at that point of need. Do you know, God has the ability to protect us, to comfort us, to bring peace to us, to heal us, to restore and sustain us. And when we pray, God begins that work in us. But, you know, we, we can hold each other up in prayer too. And that's really important. If you're struggling, and all of us struggle at some point at the moment, let someone know, then they can pray for you too. Do you know, it's fine to pray with each other on the phone, or FaceTime, or just say, right, we'll pray in this same 10-minute slot. Because do you know what? The Holy Spirit is better than Zoom or FaceTime or anything. The Holy Spirit can deal with our socially distanced prayer. See, we're an incredibly privileged people because we can come directly to God in prayer. Jesus made a way for us to do that through his sacrifice on the cross. We can have a personal relationship with our Father, with our Father God. The final freedom that I want to look about is our mindset. You see, the amount of negativity coming at us through media, uh, social networks, government announcements, it's overwhelming. It seems as if the media have decided that we only need doom and gloom. It's like the bloke who like presses the send the message out button. So the bloke off Dad's army who goes, we're doomed. <laughs> we're not doomed. We're the people of God. We are children <laughs> of the living God. We can come to him in prayer. We can support each other. We are far from doomed. I don't think that's even a political comment at the moment. It's just like everything in the world that's coming at us is full of negativity. It breeds confusion. And 
do you know, it's not wrong to keep abreast of everything, to know what the new rules are, to know what's happening, to know what the strategies are. It's important that we do that. It's a sensible way to live our lives. But the thing we must do is we need to balance that confusion with our confidence in God. We need to remember to speak faith to each other. Not to get drawn into only ever talking about COVID. Do you know there are other things in the world to talk about? If all our conversation is about restriction and lockdown and isolation, we start to bring ourselves into a small little world. And that's not the world that we inhabit as Christians. You see, when we talk about our faith, our experience of God's love, God's grace, our hopes, our visions, our future, our world gets bigger not smaller. I honestly don't know how the lockdown restrictions will roll out. We know that things are moving, we know they're getting more serious. As someone who works in the hospitality sector, I know that there's going to be a rough ride ahead. But I know that God is bigger than all of my circumstances. Anything I face, God is bigger. God tops it. You see, our future isn't in the hands of politicians or experts or analysts or anyone else. Our today, tomorrow and eternity is safe in the hands of our Father God. Philippians 4.8 tells us, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, worthy, think about such things. I love these verses. When I was still a baby Christian, uh, my, my grandfather died. And... I was trying to wrestle with, what do I think about this? How does this affect that? And Ruth Simpson sent me a card with these verses on. And I read them, and baby Christian as I was, with not a great depth of Bible knowledge, I got hold of something. Those verses telling me to think about whatever's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent or praiseworthy, weren't saying to me, just think nice thoughts and this will go away. They were pointing me to the character of my Father God. You see, all those attributes originate in God himself. God is true. God is noble. God's right. God's pure. God's lovely. God's admirable. He's excellent and praiseworthy. So what Ruth was saying was, in your circumstances, remember Remember who God is. Remember all that he is. When we turn our thoughts to God, to all he is, and all he's done for us, we find a better perspective. We find that the noise of the media is less insistent. It's like the more we focus on God, we just turn the volume down a bit and it's not overwhelming anymore. It's in proportion because our confidence is in the Lord, not in anything else. I'm not suggesting we mute the world. I'm suggesting that we refocus and let God be the loudest voice in our life because that's where our confidence comes from. Our confidence comes from God. When we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we find that we're keeping our eyes fixed on the one who will help us navigate these difficult times. I wrote this sermon yesterday and I hope that at least some of it's still relevant 24 hours after writing it. It's entirely possible that all the COVID stuff isn't. All the lockdown stuff is outdated. But do you know what's true? The God stuff. The God stuff is all true because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And God hasn't changed throughout any of this. If, as I've spoken about this, you've thought, that's not my experience of God. I haven't ever made that personal relationship. I haven't quite got to the point where that's where my confidence is seated. I'm not, not sure I'm a child of God. There's a prayer, prayer we pray when we make a commitment to God for the first time. If this is the first time that you've considered giving your life to the Lord, or if it's the 50th time you've reaffirmed that decision, this prayer is always good to pray out loud. To, to, to share, to connect with, to reconnect, to connect for the first time. 
If this is the first time you pray this prayer, get in touch with somebody through the information that you'll find on the screen, and somebody will pray with you, support you, help you in that journey. But let's pray. Lord Jesus, I know I've done things wrong in my thoughts, words, and actions. There are so many good things I've not done. There are so many wrong things I have done. I'm sorry for those wrong things and turn from everything I know to be bad. You gave your life for me on a cross and gratefully I give my life back to you. Now I ask you to come into my life, come in as my saviour to clean me, come in as my Lord to lead me, and I will serve you all the remaining days of my life. Amen.